Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for this wonderful opportunity to talk to you. It's an honor and a pleasure for me. In 18th century, our prominent emperors, Catherine the Great, said that Russia is a European power. Not everybody agreed with her in 18th century, not everybody agrees with her now. And I am really happy to be today with those people who, instead of crimes and stupidity of the government of my country, still believe that Russia is a natural part of uh, Europe. I think Catherine was right. We have European culture, European cities, European-oriented youngsters, European education. We feel ourselves at home in Europe. We are not at home in Asia or Africa. We are Europeans. But our state, the state of Russia, current state of Russia, is not European now, not at all. We have our high dictatorship, which is a very serious threat for our own country, for the Europe, and for the rest of humanity. Let me share with you my answers for three important questions. What's the most important, most serious of those which happened now in Russia? Then what can we expect in the near future? And what can Europe do? Not to protect us, not to protect our democracy, but to protect European civilization. So, among what's happened in Russia now, it's artificial, you must understand, it's artificial dictatorship. Our society is much more democratic, much more tolerant, much more European-oriented than our government. It's a very big contradiction between the society and the government. More and more Russians disagree with the existence with these dictatorships. With this dictatorship, we have protests, mass mass protests all around the country, from the west to far east, from the north to south. And every day, Mr. Putin himself became less and less popular, less and less respected. People are tired of him, as Belarusians tired of Lukashenko. On these regional elections you discuss now, United Russia lost a lot of seats in the parliaments of different level. We have very deep moral crisis in the country, much more deep than in the last years of the Soviet Union. People do not believe, people do not trust to the government. If the government, for example, if the government say, says that a national currency, ruble, is stable, well, this very day, people will, will begin to buy dollars and euros. They know that the government lies every day. The government cannot control the situation anymore. For example, many years they created artificial, illegal rules which gave them the possibility not to allow the opponents to take part in the elections, to falsificate the results of the elections and so on. Now, these rules are not enough anymore and they create the new rules, absolutely crazy, absolutely crazy rules and they are ready for direct violence like this attempt to kill Alexei Navalny, who is the most influ influenceable and most popular leader of Russian democratic opposition. Then, what can we expect in the near future? We must understand that this system will not change because of the elections. Elections are very important, but mainly for the future, for the preparation the country the people for the future when it will be necessary to create a new state on the ruins which will have in the country unfortunately when this system Putin's system will go 
there are less and less chances. Near zero, I'm afraid, for the peaceful existence of this situation. And our leadership will be more and more aggressive, both inside the country, repressions to everybody who disagrees with them, and outside the country. It will be more aggressive towards their neighbors and towards the world itself. And you must understand, it's the agony of the system. It's the real agony of the system. What can you, Europe, what can you do? Well, you cannot help us directly. Only we can resolve our problems, ourselves, only ourselves. And we have no right, in my mind, we have no right to ask you to pay too much for uh, assistance, for saving us. You must care about your own countries and you have their own problems. Anyway, there are some things which could be very helpful for us and which are not expensive for us. First, help to those who are fighting for freedom and dignity in Russia now. For example, give them, if it's necessary, them and their families, the refugee status in, their, in your countries. I know you do it, but um, please do it. Uh, do it more. Uh, people who risk their lives and freedom in Russia today, they must understand that they will be accepted if it's necessary. And the moral support. The moral support of the West from Russia to Russian dissidents was very important in the Soviet time. Many of you know it. And it's not less important now. It's really very important. For example, if you vote for the special Navalny Act, like for Magnitsky Act, you will not pretend you killing them, for sure. No. But you will give hope and energy and power to thousands and thousands of democratic activists in my country. And the last thing which is necessary, you, the West, must be military strong and united. I understand how difficult it is now in the conditions you have in Europe, in the situation you have in Europe, in the United States of America, in many, many other countries. But it's really necessary. Don't forget that in Russia today, we have very aggressive and irrational system. And this system, which always ready for, for the war, even for the big war. You cannot persuade the leaders of the system by rational arguments. They have irrational goals. They are strange people. And let me say, as a professional psychologist, I'm not sure that they are healthy. I'm not sure. And the only thing which could stop them is understanding that you, the West, is strong and that you are ready for resistance. So, dear friends, be prepared and God save you. Thank you.